Hi, my name is Harleen. I'm a junior at the college and a student leader at the Institute of Politics. Last night at the forum, we had IOP fellows Mark McKinnon and Brett O'Donnell do a pre-debate discussion on what they expected to see that night. I'm here right now with Brett O'Donnell to get his post-debate analysis. During the forum, we had students send in Twitter uh, questions that they wanted to ask, so let's get started. Our first question is from Vivian Shaw 21 who won? So give us a brief analysis of how you think the night went. Well, I think it was pretty clear that uh, Governor Romney had a pretty outstanding night last night. Uh, I think that um, he went on offense early, he stayed on offense, and uh, he never let the president uh, get him off message. And I think that uh, the majority of folks actually saw it, the debate that way. Uh, and so, you know, in my opinion, I thought, the, uh, I thought Governor Romney had a, had a good night. From R. Giles Whiting, is there less risk today for candidates being vague on policy and loose with facts? There's a, it's a greater risk for candidates to be loose with facts because there's so many fact-checking organizations and the internet and, and uh, just a, a number of news sources that will fact-check the debates, fact-check what you say. And so if you play loose with the facts, you're going to get called on it and it will end up being a story which will overrun uh, what argument or what debate or what speech you might have made in which you tried to use that fact. So I think there's a greater risk to playing loose with the facts than there's ever been. Thanks for joining us, Mark. We took uh, questions from Twitter last night. Amir Garvey wants to know, do Democratic and Republican approaches to persuading undecided voters differ significantly? No, they, they really don't. I mean, the, the people on both sides of the aisle have the same tools and the, the pool of voters that they're going after are, are really the same groups of people. And so they're, both sides are trying to understand what it is that they want to hear and what will persuade them. So that's, that's the challenge. I mean, there's usually you know, a block of 40% or so of voters who are reliably Democratic, 40% or so that are reliably Republican, and that other 20% both campaigns are going after those voters, so, uh, but the, the methods and techniques that they employ to go after those voters are, are very much the same. And one final question, uh, what do the candidates need to do the next time around, especially Obama? Well, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to what Obama went through last night because uh, I remember a very similar experience that I had with George Bush in 2004. He was an incumbent president. It was first debate with Kerry, and Kerry cleaned his clock. And you know, a lot of what was happening last night was the same thing we saw, which is you just you have an incumbent president who really is not excited about being there. <laughs> I mean, he's he's had he, he's uh, he's not used to having somebody in his face on a big or sharing the stage, and having to defend his record for an hour and a half. So it's it's a it's an uncomfortable situation that. Uh, uh, that unfortunately, in Obama's case and Bush's case, they showed it in their performance that they, they really weren't happy about being there, they weren't excited about being in there. So, but uh, in Bush's case, and I think certainly in Obama's case, he, he, he recognizes the problems, and he, he knows that he needs to up his game substantially, and he's a gifted uh, communicator and a skilled politician, and I have no doubt that, that, he'll, that he's not going to let it happen again. And if he does, he may be a one-term president.